Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation with complex numbers. We can also call this problem a locus problem. You will see why I said that in a little bit. But if you do the complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. And if you have any questions, always feel free to ask. That's the best way to learn. So we have this equation where we multiply z and z bar, the complex conjugate of z, and then add 12i to it. By the way, i is the square root of negative 1, in case you didn't know. And on the right-hand side, we have another complex number. So our goal is to find the z values that satisfy this equation. z is a complex number, and the complex number can be defined as a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative 1, as I said earlier. Great, so that kind of means that we can probably replace z with a plus b i, right? You can also use x plus y i. It doesn't matter, no big deal, but with the locus problems, we prefer x plus y i. And the reason behind that is we want to be able to graph it in the coordinate plane so x and y are better suited for that purpose. So let's go ahead and do that. z equals x plus yi. This implies that z bar is x minus yi. So when you multiply z and z bar, when you add them, you get a real number all the time. In that sense, z bar is unique. So now if you plug it in, x plus yi multiply by x minus yi, and then plus 12i, and the square root of that is going to equal 3 plus 2i. What's the next step? What do you think? We have a radical. We need to get rid of the radical, so let's square both sides. By the way, I'm calling this the first method because I'll show you an alternative. When we multiply these two things, it looks like difference of two squares, but since i is the square root of negative 1, this implies that i squared is negative 1, which is something that you should never ever forget. It's super important. So when you multiply, it just becomes x squared plus y squared, because i squared is negative 1. And then you get plus 12i, and since we squared both sides, we already got rid of the radical. Now what happens on the right hand side is interesting, right? This one squared, this one squared, that's 9 plus 4i squared, but i squared is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, so it's going to be like 9 minus 4, plus 2ab is going to be 12i. This is the nicest part, because 12i cancels out. Uh-oh, this is nice. Now we get something like x squared plus y squared equals 5. Now you might be asking, like, how do we solve for z when we have an equation in x and y? There is only one equation, but two variables, which means we have infinitely many solutions. That's why it's called a locus problem. And I'll tell you what uh, we can make out of that. But in this case, just think about it this way. You can pick any x value you want. In this case, x and y are both kind of, uh, I guess, um, dependent or independent variables, whatever. We can say, okay, suppose x equals 2. That implies two things. y is either 1 or negative 1, because if x is 2, then y squared equals 1, so on and so forth. So that gives us two solutions, 2 plus i, 2 minus i. By the way, you probably noticed that if z is a solution, so is z bar, because these are interchangeable. You get the idea? Okay, cool. So yes, they come up as pairs. And you can definitely find, how about x equals square root of 5? Is that going to work? Absolutely, because x squared is 5, y is going to be 0, and that just means z equals square root of 5, which is a real number, and of course, this equation should have real solutions too, right? I mean, come on. If, if z is square root of 5, then its absolute value is going to be square root of 5, and absolute value squared is going to be 5, and 5 plus 12i, which is kind of interesting, right? If you take the square root of this number, it'll actually give you 
3 plus 2 ion. You can always check that out. But anyways, there is a bunch of solutions, infinitely many solutions to express that. We can do the following. So Z is a solution as long as the real part and the imaginary part of Z satisfies the, this equation, which means it's actually a circle. What does that mean? It means that all the Z values, oops, sorry, it's a little skewed or distorted, but as you get the idea, this is a circle with radius root five and center at zero, zero. So any point on this circle is gonna be a solution. For example, two plus I as well as two minus I. And you can see the symmetry here, right? Okay, you get the idea hopefully, and you can definitely produce many more solutions. General idea, you just plug in x plus y i for z. You could also do a plus pi. Now, what would happen, because a plus pi, come on, is the name of this channel, right? If you did that, you would be getting something like this, but then if you wanted to visualize this in the complex plane, you would probably need to convert it, or you could say, hey, this is the a, this is the b, and so on and so forth. Get the idea? That's the general idea. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is not very different from this uh, first method, I think, but it still hopefully is going to count as a valid method. First, I square both sides. I don't really care what this product gives me. When I square both sides, I get z times z bar plus 12i as before 9 minus 4 plus 12i. Again, 12i is going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with z times z bar is equal to 5. Now, how do you find an equation that satisfies? So, so there's a couple of ways to go about it. But one of the things you can think of is, if you know this identity, it's going to be a little easier. Z times, and I think you should know this, Z times Z bar is absolute value of Z squared. This identity, by the way, can be written in different ways, which is kind of interesting. For example, I can write it as Z over absolute value of Z, because absolute value of Z over Z bar. You see? It's the same equation. The only problem with this is z cannot be zero, but here z can be zero, which is trivial, but we know that our z is not zero. So what does this give you? This gives you square root of z squared equals five. And then you can think of it as since absolute value of z, did I say square root of z? I mean, the absolute value of z squared is five. This means the absolute value of z is root five because Absolute value cannot be negative, even in the complex world. So there's only one solution to this equation. And this basically represents, think about it, in the coordinate plane, numbers whose absolute value is always five, square root of 5. So always like square root of 5 units away from 0, which means, again, the same circle. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.